Hi friends, today we will discuss about the technical aspects of mutual fund investment performance evaluation. The topics to be covered are strategies for mutual fund evaluation, ratios to gauge risk and return and trends in investment management. Friends, let us understand the criteria of mutual fund performance evaluation. The following parameters are used to evaluate the performance of mutual funds. Number 1. Asset mix. It refers to the allocation of corpus of scheme across stocks, bond or cash. It reflects the degree of risk and return. Number 2. Net asset value, often referred to as NAV. It refers to the market value of assets minus its liabilities. The NAV is divided by the number of units outstanding on the valuation date. It is computed as NAV is equal to market value of funds investments plus receivables plus accrued income minus liabilities minus accrued expenses divided by number of units outstanding. Number 3 entry or exit loads. The amount loaded by fund managers to purchase or sell units. Such loads justify the administrative expenses to be incurred by the fund managers. Number 4. Discounts offered. Generally, close-ended schemes are offered at a discount for better marketability. Number 5. Rate of returns promised. The compounded annual total return on a mutual fund scheme represents the rate of return to investors from the date of issue. It is calculated on NAV basis or price basis. Number 6. Standard deviation. It refers to the fund's volatility in terms of rise and fall in its returns. It measures the risk by measuring the degree to which the fund fluctuates in relation to its mean return. Number 7. Beta. It measures its price volatility relative to a particular stock market index. Number 8. Alpha. It measures the extra return earned on a scheme on a risk adjusted basis. Number 9. Gross dividend yield. It is an important indicator of the investment characteristics of a mutual fund. Value oriented funds have higher gross dividend yield and growth oriented funds have lower yield. Number 10. Portfolio turnover ratio. It represents the churn in the portfolio. The formula for portfolio turnover is lower of purchase or sale during a given period divided by average daily net assets. Friends, let us understand a few illustrations. The first illustration goes, the unit price of a scheme of a mutual fund is rupees 10. The public offer price of the unit is rupees 10.204 and the redemption price is rupees 9.80. Let us calculate A the front end load and B the back end load. Friends, let us look at the solution. Let us calculate the front end load. The formula goes like this public offer price is equal to net asset value divided by 1 minus front end load. When we substitute the values given, 10.204 is equal to 10 divided by 1 minus f. 10.204 1 minus f is equal to 10. 10.204 into 1 minus f is equal to 10. 10.204 minus 10.204 f is equal to 10. Therefore, 10.204 f is equal to 
minus 10. So, we get the value of f 0 0.204 divided by 10.204 which is close to 0 0.01999 that is equal to 2 percent. Now friends let us calculate the back end load. The formula goes like this redemption is equal to net asset value divided by 1 minus back end load. When we substitute the values given 9.80 is equal to 10 divided by 1 minus b 9.80 into 1 minus b is equal to 10 9.80 minus 9.80 b is equal to 10 minus 9.80 b is equal to 10 minus 9.80 therefore b is equal to 0 0.20 divided by 9.80. So, the answer we get is 2.04 percent. Let us check the other illustration. For example, ABC fund has made a return of 13 percent, 15 percent and 8 percent respectively for the first year, the second year and the third year. Let us calculate the standard deviation of the return of the fund. The solution goes like this. First we shall calculate the average return that is equal to 13 plus 15 plus 8 divided by 3 which is equal to 12. For the first year 12 minus 13 whole square is equal to 1. For the second year 12 minus 15 whole square is equal to 9. For the third year 12 minus 8 whole square is equal to 16. The standard deviation is equal to under root 1 plus 9 plus 16 divided by 3. So, the answer we get is 2.944. Let us talk about the ratios that are popularly used for evaluation of performance of mutual funds. The first one is Sharpe ratio. This ratio proposed by William Sharp describes how much return is he receiving for the extra volatility that an investor endures for holding a riskier asset. He needs to be properly compensated for the additional risk he undertakes for not holding a risk free asset. The risk adjusted return is called Sharpe ratio. It is also called reward to variability ratio. A fund with a higher Sharpe ratio gets a better rank. Let us look into the formula now. Sharpe ratio is equal to mean portfolio return minus risk free rate divided by standard deviation of portfolio return r bar p minus r f divided by standard deviation p where r bar p is expected portfolio return r f is risk free rate and standard deviation p is the portfolio standard deviation. Let us understand a simple illustration. For example, x y z limited has got 12.04 percent as annualized standard deviation. The annualized return for the same fund is 16.8 percent and the average yield on one year treasury paper is 6.8 percent. Let us calculate the Sharpe ratio. The formula again goes like this S is equal to R p minus R f divided by standard deviation p. When we substitute the values 16.2 minus 6.8 divided by 12.04 
gives us a sharp ratio of 0 0.781. The second one is Sortino ratio. This ratio proposed by Frank A. Sortino identified the weakness of the sharp ratio and thus tried to differentiate between the good and the bad volatility. This differentiation allows to calculate a risk adjusted measure of a fund's performance in a clear and a comprehensive way. It is a modification of the sharp ratio but penalizes only those returns falling below a user specified target. The formula for Sortino ratio is like this. Sortino ratio is equal to R minus R f divided by standard deviation d, where R is equal to expected return, R f is risk free rate of return and standard deviation d is the standard deviation of negative asset returns. Here R equals the assets or portfolios annualized return, R f equals the risk free rate and standard deviation d equals the assets or the portfolios downside deviation. The third is Trenor ratio. This ratio developed by Jack Trenor measures returns earned in excess of that which could have been earned on a risk less investment per each unit of market risk. It adjusts excess return for systematic risk. It is computed by dividing a portfolio's excess return by its beta. It is also called reward to volatility ratio. The formula goes like this, Trenor ratio is equal to R i minus R f divided by beta, where R i is the return of the investment, R f is risk free rate and beta stands for beta of the portfolio. The next is Jensen's alpha ratio. This ratio developed by Michael Jensen is used to measure the risk adjusted performance of a fund in relation to its expected market return. It is based on the capital asset pricing model. The higher the alpha, the more a portfolio has earned above the level predicted. The formula is Jensen's alpha is equal to R i minus R f plus beta into R m minus R f, where R i is the realized return of the portfolio or investment, R m is the realized return of the appropriate market index, R f is the risk free rate of return for the time period and B is beta of the portfolio of investment with respect to the chosen market index. The next is Modigliani risk adjusted ratio which is also called M2 ratio. It is the measure of risk adjusted returns of some investment portfolio. It measures the returns of the portfolio adjusted for the risk of the portfolio relative to that of some benchmark. The formula is M2 is equal to ERF plus ARP minus ERF divided by standard deviation P into standard deviation M minus ARM where ERF is effective return of a risk free asset, ARP is average return of a portfolio, ARM is average return of a market portfolio, standard deviation P is the standard deviation of the portfolio and standard deviation M 
is the standard deviation of the market portfolio. The next is the information ratio. Information ratio is a ratio of portfolio returns above the returns of a benchmark, usually an index to the volatility of those returns. It measures a portfolio manager's ability to generate excess returns relative to a benchmark but also attempts to identify the consistency of the investor. The formula for the same is information ratio is equal to RP minus RI divided by SP minus I where RP is return of the portfolio, RI is return of the index or the benchmark, S p minus i is equal to tracking error. Tracking error means standard deviation of the difference between returns of the portfolio and returns of the index. One more ratio that is used is S and P's risk adjusted capital ratio. This ratio developed by Standard & Poor is a measure of financial institutions that compares total adjusted capital to the institution's risk weighted assets. They test the capital adequacy of a financial institution. The newly added to performance evaluation is the Fama French three factor model. This model was designed for explaining risk and return of the stocks. It was developed by Nobel laureate Eugene Fama and renowned researcher Kenneth French. It is unique in the way that it not only reveals the primary factors that drive a stock return, but also provides the strategies for using those factors in the portfolio for a potentially higher expected long term return. This model builds off of the one of factor models associated with capital asset pricing model which is called CAPM with a factor referred to as beta by adding the factor of size also referred to as small minus big that is SMB and value as defined by high minus low that is HML. Required return can be calculated as RI is equal to RF plus SI divided by SM multiplied by RM minus RF where SM is the standard deviation of market returns. The net selectivity is then calculated by subtracting the required return from the actual return of the fund. Among all the performance measures, two models namely Trenor measure and Jensen model use systematic risk based on a premise that the unsystematic risk is diversifiable. These models are suitable for large investors like institutional investors with high risk taking capacities. As they do not face paucity of funds and can invest in a number of options to dilute some risks. For them, a portfolio can be spread across a number of stocks and sectors. However, Sharp measure and Pharma model that consider the entire risk associated with the fund are suitable for small investors. As the ordinary investor lacks the necessary skill and resources to be diversified. Friends, let us understand various portfolio management strategies. The first one is tactical asset allocation versus portfolio rebalancing. Tactical asset allocation is an active management portfolio strategy that shifts the percentage of assets held in various categories. 
to take advantage of market pricing anomalies or strong market sectors. This strategy allows portfolio managers to create extra value by taking the advantage of certain situations in the marketplace. As it is a moderately active strategy, since the manager will get back to the portfolio's original strategic asset mix when desired short term profits are achieved. Portfolio rebalancing It is the process of buying and selling portfolio in order to adjust the tolerance for the risk of each class of security. The risk and returns continuously change resulting in the change in investor mindset and thus he may reallocate his funds to satisfy his financial goals. It may lead to increase or decrease in risk. Hence the basic difference between the two is that the former aims at maximizing returns and the latter aims at reduction of the risk. Tactical asset allocation is an active strategy keeping a continuous watch on markets whereas portfolio rebalancing is a passive strategy keeping a track of investor requirements. Core Satellite Portfolio Framework According to Vanguard's research, it is conventionally suggested that indexing works better in the most efficient market segments as Information is readily available while active management works in inefficient markets. Under inefficient markets, information is not readily available and so primarily individual managers may find opportunities to outperform the benchmarks. So the major portion of the portfolio consists of passive investments that track the major market indices whereas the rest of the portion known as satellites are in the form of actively managed investments. It aims at minimizing costs, tax liability and volatility and improvise on performance. Thus, it caters to most of the needs of the investors. Now asset allocation versus diversification. The US Securities and Exchange Commission defines asset allocation as dividing an investment portfolio among various asset categories such as stocks, bonds and cash. Such allocation largely depends on the individual's capacity to take risk and the time he requires to achieve his financial goals. Diversification on the other hand is spreading money among different investments to reduce risk. Segments of each asset category need to be assessed under various market conditions. Asset allocation is not necessarily diversification. Across assets and within assets, the money needs to be spread so as to minimize risk. Benchmarking Mutual Fund Performance in April 2002, SEBI made benchmarking mandatory for mutual funds. In every half yearly results, the performance of mutual funds needs to be disclosed along with the performance of a benchmark index. In India, the benchmark is BSE Sensex and NSE Nifty for large cap funds. The reason why benchmarking is important is quintessentially the customer's need for value for money. Since the fund managers charge for the same, the mutual funds need to outperform the peers. It is necessarily used by investors to assess the option of choosing a fund over another looking at the long term impact. Outperforming throughout in the dynamic market seems to be a tough task for the fund managers. Hence, from an investor point of view, it is a key factor in deciding his portfolio. Portfolio Management Services The need for the R is tailor-made products. The marketer needs 
to cater to specific and not generic consumer needs. So is the case in investment management. The portfolio management services are entities which are registered with regulators, offer customized portfolio services to investors with a large pool of funds and specific financial goals. On behalf of the investors, they hold stocks unlike mutual funds where the investor is a unit holder. These stocks are invested in equity and debt options. The investor holds the stocks in his own DMAT account, but the fund manager operates on his behalf. Secondly, he needs to invest a minimum of rupees 25 lakhs for a portfolio management service. The only problem with PMS seems to be the fact that mutual fund performance is made public, whereas the client has to rely on judgment of the fund manager in the former case. Friends, so let us have a look at the trends and the growth in the mutual fund industry that is the road ahead for mutual funds. Number one, looking at the tough competition in the mutual fund industry and inclination of high net worth individuals towards the same, quite a few pioneering products have been launched in the market. A few are number one options. With respect to number of schemes, the investor can choose any of the three options. The dividend payout option where the dividend is paid in cash to investors. Systematic investment plan where the investor can invest regular sums of money every month to buy a unit of a mutual fund scheme. Value added services. Mutual funds offer value added services like redemption over phone, triggers and alerts, checkbook facility and new points of purchase. For example, HDFC mutual funds allows investors to sell units through their ATMs. Theme funds. Such funds invest in a sector surrounding a theme. For example, pharmaceutical, infrastructure, etc. The investor can assess the industry trends and make a choice. Global funds. Such funds mobilize rupee funds for Indian residents for investments abroad. This product essentially focuses in the needs of high net worth individuals and ultra high net worth individual investors. Commodity funds. Such funds invest directly in a commodity through commodity shares or commodity futures. Now friends, let us look at the information published on the site of Association of Mutual Funds in India which displays interesting data about the growth in the industry, investor patterns as well as preference towards schemes. As a student of investment management, it is important to study and analyze such information to understand the latest scenario and the future of this industry so far Indian economy is concerned. Number 1. Assets managed by Indian mutual fund industries have grown from rupees 13.29 trillion in October 2015 to rupees 16.86 trillion in October 2016. That represents a 27 percent growth in assets over October 2015. The proportionate share of equity oriented schemes is now 32 percent of the industry's assets in October 2016 down from 32.7 percent in October 2015. The proportionate share of debt oriented schemes is 45.4 percent of industry assets in October 2016 up from 44.1 percent in October 2015. Individual investors now hold a lower share of industry assets that is 45.4 percent in October 2016 compared with 
46 percent in October 2015. Institutional investors account for 54.6 percent of the assets of which corporates are 85.7 percent. The rest are Indian and foreign institutions and banks. Equity oriented schemes derive 85 percent of their assets from individual investors that is retail plus high net worth individuals. Institutional investors dominate liquid and money market schemes that is up to 92 percent, debt oriented schemes close to 64 percent and exchange traded funds and funds of funds of close to 82 percent. Institutions include domestic and foreign institutions and banks. High net worth individuals are investors who invest with a ticket size of rupees 5 lakhs or above. Individual investors primarily hold equity oriented schemes while institutions hold liquid and debt oriented schemes. 60 percent of individual investor assets are held in equity oriented schemes. 88 percent of the institution's assets are held in liquid or money market schemes and debt oriented schemes. The value of assets held by individual investors in mutual funds increased from rupees 6.11 lakh crores in October 2015 to rupees 7.65 lakh crores in October 2016, an absolute increase of 25.14 percent. The growth in institutional assets from rupees 7.17 lakh crores to rupees 9.2 lakh crores an absolute growth of 28.26 percent. The top performing mutual funds in the large cap sector are Birla Sun Life Frontline Equity, Birla Sun Life Top 100, Kotak Select Focus Fund, SBI Blue Chip Fund all of them are ranked 1 by Crisil and give an average return of close to 12 percent. In the small and mid cap sector, the Crisil has given first rank to following mutual funds, DSPBR micro cap fund, Franklin smaller companies, Mira emerging blue chip fund, all of them getting rank 1 and an average of close to 30 percent returns. In the diversified equity sector, Crisil has given rank 1 to ICICI Prudential Value Discovery Fund, LNT India Value Fund, Principal Emerging Blue Chip Fund, SBI Magnum Multicap Fund, and UTI MNC Fund. The information has been sourced from www.moneycontrol.com/slash mutual funds/slash top rated funds. Friends, let us brush through the whole session now. This session explain the various strategies for evaluation of performance of mutual funds. It enlists popularly used ratios which consider risks and returns associated with investment in mutual funds. These ratios are used in markets as indicators to guide both investors and portfolio managers. The portion explaining asset allocation, diversification and portfolio management services is an attempt to enrich the students about new trends of investment management. This trend is an offshoot of requirements of the educated, aware and intelligent customers. Also, it summarizes the growth in the mutual fund industry buyer behavior, customized products and their investment patterns in the year 2016 as compared to the year 2015. There is a significant growth in this sector which can be contributed to the benefits, the innovations and the regulations supporting the mutual fund industry. Thank you friends.